English. His main teacher was a man called Aq Shamsuddin. Aq Shamsuddin was the man who instilled in him that he must one day conquer Constantinople. He was the one who took his horse into the sea because the Ottomans were here and then across was where Constantinople was. So one day he, he took Muhammad al-Fatih and he took him by the shore and then he took his horse into the water until the horse water reached the neck of the horse. And then he said to him, he said, oh my son, one day you will conquer Constantinople. His father Murad al-Thani, he himself lay siege to Constantinople for 22 days. Muhammad al-Fatih would often hear his father making dua for the conquest of Constantinople. Making dua that his son would be the conqueror of Constantinople. You know what kind of tarbiyah he got? You may regard it as old fashioned. But, but Aq Shamsuddin, one day he was walking with Muhammad Fatih. Muhammad Fatih is quite young at the time. And he gives him a good. Years later, Muhammad Fatih said to his teacher, he said, Why did you beat me for that day? He said, Because my son, you are going to be tomorrow a king. You are going to be the Sultan. If you have never faced is dhulam. When you oppress other people, you won't know how it feels. I did this so you know what dhulam feels like. Second quality, the love for ilm and the love for scholars. His father made him the Amir at the age of 14. He said, you are now the Sultan. The Christians when they heard it, they're very happy. 14 year old child, he won't be able to do anything. So they decide to attack his land. So he sends a message to his father and he says, Oh, my father, you know, they are about to attack the lands. I need you to come back. And his father said, No, you are in charge. You deal with it. 14 years old. So he says to his father, He said, Listen, if you're the Sultan, then it's your responsibility. And if I am the Sultan, then I command you to defend the lands. So then his father comes and takes the reign again. The year that his father passed away, the greatest agitator of the Europeans, he was the thorn in their side. When he passed away, they were happy. Francesco sent a letter to all the leaders of Europe saying that your greatest agitator has died. His successor is an inexperienced young boy, 21 years old. He said, it's time now to destroy the Ottomans. La ilaha illallah. His father passes away. He's crying at the side of his bed and his mother comes to him who just lost her husband, just lost the king. Said, son, get up, we got things to do. They were rejoicing and he was busy with the work. He bought the prophecy of the message of Allah 800 years from before to light. But not only that, the longest empire in Christendom is Byzantine, Eastern Europe. For 1100 years, the Byzantines ruled Christendom. Who was the man who destroyed them? Muhammad al-Fatih. Muhammad al-Fatih. Man prepared. He had, his, he had his eyes on the goal. 21 years old when he became the leader. 23 years old when he lay siege to Constantinople. And you know how he prepared? Meticulously. He made sure everything was prepared. To the degree that he had a man called Urban. Urban was a Christian Hungarian and he was a specialist in making cannons. So he said to Urban, I will pay you whatever you want. You are the best in your field. Can you make me a cannon which is unparalleled in the world? Urban said to him, I will make you a cannon which will destroy the walls of Babylon. You know how big this cannon was? A man could crawl in its barrel. You needed 60 oxes to pull it, 200 men this side, 200 men this side. 13 miles away, you could hear its blast. He raised the taxes where others lived within Muslim lands. He drew treaties with anybody who could impede his mission. The Hungarians, the Bulgarians, all of them he drew treaties with. And then he built what was known as the Bosphorus throat cutter. So basically to get to Constantinople, you had to go through the Bosphorus. They already had one fort 
on the other side he built another fort so nobody could get to Constantinople and then they placed cannons the narrations mentioned that Muhammad Fatih built it with his own hands he took off his top he told his, the, all the princes take off your tops he told all the ulama take off your tops and work they work with their own hands where did he learn this? see they say he was a half with the Quran and they also say that he was an expert in history he studied history he saw when the Prophet وسلم, built Masjid Nabi وسلم, and the Messenge of Allah وسلم, carried the bricks until the narration mentioned that his back bent over and the Sahaba said oh Messenge of Allah we'll carry for you and the Prophet وسلم, said you carry that one I will carry this one and the narration mentioned that the Prophet وسلم, front and back was covered with dust this is where these people learned from Caesar is watching all this he's in Constantinople he sees what's happening and he knows that this army is getting ready so he sends a message to the Pope we need your help all of Western Christendom is there all of Europe is there we need your help the Pope said on one condition because Christianity was divided into two you had Orthodox Christianity which was the Byzantines which ruled from Constantinople and in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu all the way to Sham and then you had the rest of Christendom which was Catholics the problem was that each one of them were putting fatwas on the other each one of them regarded the other one as kafir so the Pope said we will help you on one condition that all of you become Catholics Caesar agreed so now they come to the Sophia Hagia they're there the Pope's delegation is there they're about to sign that all of Orthodoxy will convert to Catholicism and then the people of Constantinople they they become outraged the second in charge in that meeting stands up and he says we would prefer the turbans of the Turks rather than the long hats of the Catholics so Catholicism the Pope withdraws his help I ask you today you ask any Christian in the world was that statement worth it they will tell you no it wasn't worth it but we do exactly the same thing when you're gonna learn we would prefer turban of the Turks to the long hats of the Latin they lost Constantinople you know like you and I cry about losing Spain Constantinople was far more precious to them than Spain is to us 1453 they lost this we lost 1492 we eventually lost Granada so Muhammad al-Fatih now he, he, he brings the cannons three cannons they have it takes him two months to bring them to Constantinople and places and then the battle starts and they shoot the cannons the cannons pulverize the walls of Constantinople the narrations mentioned the women came out of their higher houses screaming because they had heard nothing like this one Muslim historian he says that when I heard the cannon by Allah it was like Israfil had blown the trumpet and the Christian historians say but worse than this was when the Muslims would say Allah Akbar so it would make a shiver run down your spine when they would say the takbir and the walls of Constantinople were very high so what they would do is that they would shoot the arrows but they, they, they marvel at the bravery of the Turkish soldiers Leonardo who was a contemporary who was there he says that the Muslim would come close we would wipe all of them but the next batch would come he says sometimes to save one person 10 would die but they could not live with the shame of leaving one of their companions unburied you know what the French traveler Breteradon he says he, he, he in 1430 he met the Turkish army and this is what he says about the Turkish army they are indifferent to where they sleep and they usually lie on the ground their horses are good, cost little in food, gallop well and for a long time. Their obedience to their superiors is boundless. You know, Muhammad al-Fatih, when he took his army, 
the narrations mentioned he went to one marketplace he would often disguise himself and the market owner said to him i have enough to feed my children today i've watched that market ma that person over there nobody has come to his stall you go to his stall so muhammad al-fatih would go to his stall he went to him he bought something he said i have enough to feed my children today go to that stall Muhammad al-Fatih said on that occasion, I realize now I have the people to conquer Constantinople. Well, why was it possible to have people like this? Because they had a leader like Muhammad al-Fatih. The narration mentioned Muhammad al-Fatih would always be at the forefront. Danish Hilmi says, he's a Turkish historian. He said, since the day he became the Sultan, every single day of his life for two years, he studied the maps of Constantinople. They, they say that nobody knew what his next movement was. One of the Qadis once asked him, he said, Sultan, what are we going to do next? He said, by Allah, if the hair on my body knew what I was going to do next, I would pluck it out and I would consign it to the fire. Allah. Nobody knew. One morning, you know, because he was a mastermind, one morning what happened was that they created a frame because they were finding it very difficult to scale the walls. They created a frame which was higher than the walls three floors each floor covered with uh, skin so they couldn't shoot their arrows or pour anything over them by the end of the day the christian managed to burn it down muhammad al-fatih said no problem tomorrow we will have another four one of the christian historians says he says it would have taken the entirety of christendom an entire month to make something like that and Muhammad al-Fatih did it in one night and the next day he said, we're going to make another four. And if that wasn't enough, the tunnels. Muhammad al-Fatih rahimahullah began now to dig the tunnels underneath. And now the Christians in Constantinople, they hear about this. History is excitingly rich and I mean, I'm just enjoying listening to this. Like I said, I enjoy anything that expands my knowledge. I enjoy uh, the history of the Turkish uh people it's just there's just so much to learn so so many things to come to terms with and is worth learning and worth sharing but for this i don't have much to say i'll probably give uh a few remarks at the end of the video